Hello and welcome. In today's, we'll cover the Verizon uh, communications, the Verizon stocks. We'll take the 10 year of uh, the financial data, annual uh, data, and then we'll uh, try to find this, this estimated intrinsic uh, value and internal returns for the stocks. So as you can see on my screen, I have uh, plotted the 10 years uh, uh, historical return until 2020. Uh, the blue is return on equity. The return on equity has some few good spike as uh, 2014, 15, 16 and 17 as you can see in this blue. But overall trend if you can see is growing, right? So that, that's a very good sign. That's a huge in terms of return on equity. And then the orange is the return on investment uh, capitals again and it's uh, double digits. Somewhere it's 2017, it's dropped but overall it is above 10 and sometime even it's close to 20 which is pretty good. Th uh, this is the dividend paying stocks and if I quickly look into the dividend payout ratio pretty much they have to sometime over 50 percent pay from their earning to dividend which I really don't like that's a little too much in terms of the payment of dividend especially because this company these kind of companies like uh, uh, communications and all are heavy uh, on uh, debt right so as you can see here from the 2011 is 54 and then it drops and then go up and up right and now it's somewhere 55 57 percent so let's quickly look into one by one three models the net profit model enterprise and free cash flow model to come up with our own value of intrinsic value and what we can see if we invest in this stock or estimated return then we'll try to summarize uh, that so if I see on the intrinsic value, so this is the again 10 year of revenue and uh, net profit uh, growth, right? You can see the trend. So the trend is for uh, for the last uh, 10 years, the revenue is only growing less than 2%, which is uh, honestly it looks a sign of very mature company or very decline in terms of the growth. Even if I just take the last five year revenue growth which is declining with minus 0.55 percent and uh, three years is uh, only 0.59 percent growth right so it's growing but even less than uh, one percent on the uh, the net profit side so you can see the last 10 years okay six percent growth but then in the last three or five years it's it's pretty much decline so if I take the, so what I'm doing there, I'll take the net profit growth. I say, okay, for the coming near future, it's the growth is will be minus 3.2% and then slowly it will be go to neutral and then come up to 2% and grow as the economic growth, right? So that's what I'm doing here. So if I take that one and then I grow for the forecast for the next uh, 10 years, with give the terminal value of uh, only 13, right? Uh, and then my discount rate is 10%. If I use that approach, my value of the company is $190 billion company, right? These are all numbers in millions. And the number of share outstanding is $4.138 billion. Uh, sorry, not shares out right now. So this gives me only $46 from this profit. One of the more reason for the profit is down because you can see because they also pay over 50 for or 50 percent at least to the dividend right and last but not the least they have a, a huge in terms of uh, uh, the debt as well if i show you the this is on the very zone uh, investor relation uh, side so the credit rating on the debt is a minus or s p let's pick s p is triple b or plus so below pretty much on the triple b is the uh it comes to the junk bond so they are uh, in the good state and their outlook is is good uh, right so, but they're here what their credit rating stands for if i go to their 10k and see do they have any problems right now because of the liquidity or not i don't think so because if you can see from the liquidity and capital reserve uh, though you can see the page number right you can go and check it yourself as well they are 22 billion so which increase basically their cash from 2.6 to 22.2 billion which is a major increase in terms of holding the cash right 
so that's good but at the same page i can see the unsecured debt right is 118.5 billion uh, which is not very good just give you the little bit more uh, glints on the debt side their total debt which is is due with less than uh, one year is 23.89 billion dollars and the within one to three years 46 then more than five it is 155 billion dollars so don't get scared but this is pretty much what the company has to pay in addition for the because when the equity investor comes we have to see okay first the fixed income uh, or the the creditors who space the money and they get their uh, interest and this loans and all and then as the equity investors who invest in these company we got paid last in terms of either dividends or the price appreciation right so it's always good to see if the ratings drop and all and if they won't able to make a money how come equity investor can make the money as well so maybe one of the reason as well the stocks is not doing that great so let's go a little bit more deep into this heavy data driven enterprise value model so here what i have again as usual i'm taking the 10 years of data for uh, 2 to 2020 and then here i'm showing the average so if you since you see here very clear the market cap goes from increase from 75 billion to 240 billion dollars so what is market cap is simply but share price times at the that time times the number of share outstanding right which grows the 12.36 uh, percent so it's only 12.36 percent uh, annual growth in the market cap one thing to highlight here the company even the company pay dividend company has a debt they paid that but still company able to mint increases book value higher than the the market uh, market cap which is uh, which is good but basically what i can see the company not the management is not able to gen, uh, increase the market cap although they have a good high book value as well so which can think from the negative uh, as well so when I see their, uh, the growth in terms of uh, uh, the, the return earning is, is quite very, very high. Okay, so the long term and total, what I've done here, the, all the obligations, the long term, short term debt and all the obligation, I just sum together and place it here. The debt goes in hand in hand, right? So the debt increases almost 11%, 10.56 uh, year over year growth. They don't have much excess cash so usually we reduce the excess cash and then come up with the total enterprise value so this means the enterprise value uh, growing at the rate of 11.6 percent right year over year so if you want to go and buy the company you, it, right now it takes you 319 billion dollars right so if i take the earning plus mm, and add come back to the evita we can see okay the EBITDA is increase you can see the growth rate of EBITDA sometimes is huge spike so it's not very consistent i don't like this kind of company but it's not smooth or high high growth so pretty much 7.66 percent growth here so the, the measures to see is good here is like if you want to buy the company that's what i was saying uh, and how long it will take you the money back it's take almost nine years you have to wait for nine years uh, to get your the the money back and on the average 10 year is six point so right now the company is not doing well if i compare it with 6.21 10 year benchmark right so this means companies doing worse so this means either they have to increase their earning uh, earning more so that's what we find here similarly on the net debt side if on the net debt sides they they have to uh, take at least from their earning over three years to pay off their debts i which is worse than it's the 10 year benchmark right which is 2.40 which is quite good in the early beginning 2011 to until 13 three years they did a pretty good job they can pay off their debt by 1.3 years right but now is a little worse so it seems like the coronavirus has hit the companies pretty bad so so that's good it's a good it's a 5g stocks but if I compare it with my last year when I did the at and stock valuation, it's still <laughs> better, right? But still, uh, the debt is quite high. So again, here, uh, not only this 10-year average, which you can see here as well, but you can, uh, I, prov I provide the three years and five years uh, matrix too. So being a very, very conservative, I'm just 
being okay for now uh, just because of 0.84 only EBITDA growth because EBITDA growth is from 4.48 to minus 0.45 percent so I assume market will open up people will go more towards the 5g very conservative they slowly increase the increase the the growth rate from 0.84 to 2 percent right so still not like exponential but still go and only using the terminal value of 6 rather than uh, 6.21 right so if I do the math then this will be my $226 is my present value terms but in 2030 because of this all debt and uh, all work the value of the stock will be this so it seems like it will be depreciating because of uh, if I reduce the debt and all so it will be only 52.28 uh, but in today's terms right so that's in my price in 2030 so we still receive the dividend and all but the price is down if I now use the my last model the free cash flow and adjust the capital expenditure and any net debt and borrowing I'll get my free cash flow to equity so as you can see the free cash flow to equity and then divide by per shares on I get the a share outstanding I get the free cash flow equity per share so this is again uh, the the average for the last 10 years so the, in the free cash flow field this is quite amazing to see the, okay if the companies still have pretty high in terms of the the cash flow yield which was quite high and then it dropped significantly in 2016 and then start coming back again 2020 because of and 2020 is 15 16 percent just been a bit uh, uh, conservative and uh, then just gradually decline it to again for the long term just to be a bit conservatives on uh, two uh, to the two percent then my price is 83 dollars right so usually the, with the free cash flow if you're very conservative you get the lower price but here we're getting the higher price because of the very high free cash flow yield and in 2030 we're getting the price of uh, 108 dollars right so that's why it's good to always use two three models and then try to weight it equally so if I'll just wait all three models $46 64 $83 which is today's uh, the interesting value price and give them all equal weight my my price will be 64.74 and right now the market price is 55.68 and if I tell you how much the Warren Buffet uh, price Warren Buffet bought the stocks he bought a little bit expensive so let's check it out so right now I'm on this uh, website Rise Analytics and if I click on the portfolio of Warren Buffet here I can see the where is on communication he he buys it and he buys around 58.75 and luckily enough that we got right now the market price is even lower than what he has paid thing is so if I'll see the what's the IRR for this so if I go and buy today's at let's see $55 and then $80 is this is my free cash flow what I'm going to receive and 80 is nothing but the 50 50 weight on my 2030 price from 52 and then 108 right so it gives me around uh, this this price right 80.61 if I do the math then my return is coming around 50 uh, around 16 uh, percent right 15.23 percent so uh, are you happy to that kind of a returns yes or no that's so that's your IRR estimate return so but if you wait and the price uh, price changes oops let me just increase a little bit so you can see right so these are the different entry point and the different uh, price as well so yeah so pretty much that's it uh, on this video if you want me to do the stock valuations on any other stocks feel free to put in the comments other okay thanks for watching and uh, bye for now